welcome everybody to Get Organized Challenge number five. And today we're going to talk about tools. What always comes up when we talk, when we start about the tool challenge, is people asking about when I'm talking about tools, I'm talking about stamps and punches and dies and uh, embossing folders. Uh, not talking so much about scissors and paper trimmers and that type of sort of hand tool. So at the end of class today, I'm going to talk a little bit about those. They're pretty unique per crafter because there's so many different kinds of paper trimmers and scissors and rulers and all that stuff. But I will talk a little bit that, about that at the end when I'm talking about uh, products. So if you want to hear a little about that, stick with us through the end and I'll go into that. So this week, um, if you're brand new to the challenge, obviously I have to give my little disclaimers at the front, brand new to the challenge and you have a question while you're watching, type the word QUESTION in all caps. Karen is monitoring the, um, the event downstairs and she'll answer any questions that she can. If she can't answer it, she'll bring it upstairs and I'll try to answer at the very end of the video. Um, remember that if you want to participate in the progress post prizes, or the ugly this week embellishment prizes, you need to turn in a progress post. It's easiest to do that on our Facebook page, but you can also email that in. If you're not getting the emails for the Get Organized Challenge, they do give you all the links and the handouts, printables, all that stuff um, that we talk about every week. So to verify that you're getting those, go to the Get Organized Challenge page on our website, re-sign up, and then you should get an email saying, either thanks for signing up or your preferences have changed. In either case, that means you've been added to the list. If you don't get that, look in your junk mail. If you can't find it, you're welcome to email customer service at tolly-tiffany.com and say, hey, this is my email address. I'm trying to get on the Get Organized Challenge list. Can you please check it, check it out? And Leanne will look to make sure you're on the list and confirm that you're on. Okay. <coughs> so let's get started with our tool challenge. No, let's get started with who won the progress post uh, for last week. So we have two winners for last week. First one is Amy Estrada and she says, I finally finished my scraps. Woo! And she posted a before and after, which is one of the other benefits to being a part of the Facebook group is you get to see all those pictures. She says, I tend to save all my leftovers. The file bin worked for a while, but then it got to the point I couldn't get anything in or out of it. Key. I don't want to waste pretty paper because I'll eventually use it on something. I just can't throw it away. So now it's organized by size and my Totally Tiffany Scrap Masters, way to go. Uh, now going to file them in front of the colored paper. I'm amazed at feeling so accomplished just organizing scraps. So the key um, to this uh, post is how she feels about getting it done, right? I'm amazed at um, feeling so accomplished getting this done. And it's so important when your brain feels good, when you get that I don't know if it's serotonin or whatever that little boost is, that keeps you motivated and inspired. So way to go, um, Amy, and thanks for sharing that with us. Our second winner is Delfina Martinez. This week's challenge was tough, she says. By day three of organizing all my embellishments in the four section system, I was burnt out. But when I sat down to keep working on the fourth day, I realized how amazing it was to see how much I organized. Woo! Amazing. That is a theme word, right, for last week. So... Uh, da, 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 da. inspired me to keep going and gave me renewed motivation to create. As I came across items, I was getting idea after idea. I even jotted down some quick notes of some ideas and stuck them right in the pocket that that way I'm going through my binders. I will be reminded of why I kept that specific item. Bonus. I love that idea. Thanks, Tiffany, for your help. Congratulations, Delfina and Amy, and thank you for sharing your accomplishments this week. Not only are you motivated to keep going by seeing the work that you've done, but hopefully your posts are motivating other people to stay motivated as well. Then we have the Ugly Embellishment Contest. We have two winners for that. Billy Jean Krupa. Now I have to calm down, right, because I'm starting to, I can feel my throat going. Billy Jean Krupa had some very ugly washi tape. Laura Russell with some ugly animals. Now, Laura, I think I owned those animals also at one point. And if I'm not mistaken, the, mistaken those were probably late, night, late 80s animals. Yikes. Uh, anyway, they are ugly. But it, that goes to prove the point, too. What we bought 10 years ago, 12 years ago, or whatever, that we thought was so cute, not only do we maybe think it's not cute anymore, it's, 
it's not stylish and we don't like it anymore and so doing going through this exercise of organizing and purging you're never going to use those right these particular animals probably more uh, appropriate for small children as well judging by the age of them if you had small children in the late 80s they're probably not small anymore so a good time to get rid of them so thanks everybody for sharing your ugly embellishments and congratulations to you for winning the ugly embellishment contest who would have thought at some point those ugly embellishments would bring you some sort of joy and benefit okay tool challenge I don't wear my glasses because I printed my thing too small today our goal for this challenge is to establish a way to sort store and organize tools and the big challenge with tools is they're all different shapes and sizes wood mounted stamps are different than um, what am I supposed to be calling them? I call them acrylic stamps, but they're photopolymer stamps, right? Unmounted clear stamps versus wood stamps. Different than embossing folders, different than dice, different than punches. So we have all these different tools that are all different shapes and sizes. And so getting our brain around how to organize those becomes really difficult because they don't all fit together somewhere. So the, the way to get these organized is to build on what you already know, the four section system, and to make that system work for these tools as well. And the way we do that is, there are two ways we do that. One, if you are who we call Nancy not so much, where you just have a few stamps or a few punches or a few embossing folders, you're gonna integrate those right into your four section system. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And if you are like most crafters, Gloria got a lot of, then you are going to need to create a catalog. And so we're going to talk about that, how to do that as well, and how to tie things back together. So let's start with Nancy because she's a much easier um, habit to tame. So if you are a Nancy not so much, you are going to integrate your products, your stamps, embossing folders, dies, whatever you have, right into your four section system right it's easy to incorporate them in so this is and you know what i didn't pull the um stamp on it this time you're gonna have to zoom for me um this is an impression of a gift box and you can see that i've written at the bottom of it b day birthday right so this gift box is going to work obviously in graduation in wedding in christmas in new baby uh, congratulations, happy retirement, anything where you might give someone a gift, this little box stamp could be used, right? This gift box. But this is an unmounted acrylic photopolymer stamp. I'm just going to say unmounted stamps, I guess, from now on. It'll be easier. Um, so you, you just need to make a representation of it, but the actual stamp is stored in my birthday section, right? So Nancy, not so much, has just a few stamps. Where are those going to work out? And I'm going to put a representation of this birthday stamp into my birthday sec. I mean, into my, the actual stamp is going to be my birthday section. But I'm going to put this little representation of it into Christmas, into um, congratulations, into happy retirement, into new baby. Anywhere that I might need a gift box, I'm going to put that representation. And then the word B-Day tells me that is where that actual stamp is stored. So if I'm flipping through my scrap rack or looking through whatever, however I have all those things stored, and I see this, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, I could use that stamp, and I know to go to birthday to find it, right? So you're going to use that same idea for everything. Some things are bigger than others, right? So if this is a wood-mounted stamp right same same kind of concept I've made multiple copies of it they all say number one on them because if this wood mounted stamp isn't going to fit in my scrap rack it probably isn't going to fit in whatever storage tool you're using for stickers and die cuts and that type of thing because they're bulky but this number one is going to drive me to my stamp bag number one and there it is the, that that stamp right so the idea is to remind yourself of what you have so that you'll use it and then to also be able to find it so if you are Nancy not so much you're gonna create representations whether it's an embossing folder 
or a stamp or a die or a punch, put that representation right into your, the four section system where it belongs. And then as you're flipping through that section, you're going to find, you're going to see that and it's going to drive you back to wherever that particular die pan, stamp punch is, whatever it is. All right. So Nancy, you don't have a lot of work to do because you don't have a ton of stuff. Now I want to speak to you, Gloria. Gloria, you have a lot of things and you probably are going to continue to buy more things. So you need to create a catalog of all your tools and you're going to base your catalog on the four section system, just like everything else we've done, right? So we're just literally building on that same idea and then translating it into the rest of our uh, craft room supplies. So this is my catalog. <coughs> And what I've done in this catalog is create a representation of every die, stamp, punch, <coughs> that product that I have that's a tool, and I've organized them by theme or category within the four section system. So the same themes, same categories as are within my four section system. Now you'll notice right here in the front, I have uh, just some, these are just regular 8.5 by 11 things from the office supply store. These are the instructions for how to use my punch boards, right? So I actually keep the instructions with the punch board, right? There they are, full color. This just reminds me that I've got the flower punch board or that I've got the alphabet punch board or whatever it is so that I'll remember that I have it and then I can go back and use it. So I'm actually keeping the instructions right here you could put the full color instructions right in the front of your catalog. The reason I don't do that is because I might think, oh, I'm going to use a pinwheel punch board and then without going to the catalog for any reason, and then the instructions are right there. Um, so that's why I keep them together. So if I'm looking for ideas, I'm going to find it in here. If I already know what I'm using, the instructions are there. So it's a great way to just photocopy it and use it as a reminder for what you're doing. So anything, I guess my point with that is, any type of tool that you have, a punch board, if you're unfamiliar with them, is a big bulky piece of equipment with all kinds of weird shapes sticking out of it, right? So it's really hard to store this. You couldn't really put it into a box with everything that else that takes to make pinwheels, right? It would just take up too much space. So putting it in the catalog makes it easy to remember that you've got it and then you can use it. So Everything that you have in terms of a tool, you want to figure out a way to represent it in that catalog. Again, your goal is to remember what you, that you have it so that you can find it and you can use it. And then as you go through the catalog, there's a couple of ways to do your catalog. You can see that mostly what I've done here is photocopy um, unmounted stamps, right? It's fast and easy and clean and you can do multiple representations of a stamp all at one time. So it makes it really easy. You can actually stamp out as well. So you can see in this example, I did an ABC and a one, two, three, upper and lower case of the whimsical alphabet by um, Stampin' Up. Now these are wood mounted stamps. I don't need to do the whole alphabet and every number. The goal here is to remind me that I have those stamps to let me know what size they are because again when you're using something like alphabet you're using it by size how much space do you have to fill out to uh, stamp in that word or sentiment so you need to know what size they are and what you've got now these came like this whimsical alphabet whimsical alphabet whimsical alphabet so they came in these three boxes uppercase, lowercase, and numbers, which are big and bulky. And also, I'm relying on my memory that I have uppercase, lowercase, and the numbers. So by putting it in the catalog, now I can see that I've got them. When I'm looking for alphabets, I'm going to remember that. And then there's a couple of ways to store them. So initially, I stored my Stampin' Up! wood-mounted stamps. I just labeled the end. They were right here in this basket, and that would drive me back to looking for them in this basket. Um, I wanted to keep all of them together because if I was spelling something out and I wanted to use upper and lower case, 
I wanted them all in one place. And so I transferred them all into, this is our um, double-sided, there's two sides, a stamp store and go bag. And so now I've got upper and lower case together as well as numbers, and it's just a little bit smaller and more compact, right? So my catalog says, tells me where to find these in this bag on my shelf, right? So each little notation in your catalog is going to tell you where to find whatever it is that you're looking for. So the important thing to remember here is that everything doesn't have to be together. Um, you might have punches that you use all the time, and so you want them out and displayed in something like this, right, where you can have a shelf where you see, I don't have any punches on here, but maybe I can find one quickly now, um, where they're out and available. So for me, I use my square punches and my round punches constantly when I'm working in my planner. So they are on my desk in a stadium arranger like this where I can constantly grab them. But I have other punches that I don't use all the time, and I'm going to store them in, in another way. So these are small punches. They're in just a one-inch punch pack. Um, labeled on the side what the numbers are, representations are in my catalog. So if I was looking for a cat punch and I went to animals, punch number 20 is a cat, I would know is in the bag 1 through 32, right? You don't have to keep all of your punches together and all of your stamps together all in the same place. Um, and that allows you to add to your collection without rearranging your collection, right? So, um, you're just going to put a representation in your binder, in your catalog, and that's going to drive you to wherever you have that stamp or punch stored. So things that you use all the time, you want to have out visible and accessible, but, the cat, but it doesn't matter where they are because your catalog is going to tell you where to find them. So as an example, if I go to birthday, right, on this pink, so over on this side, I've got stamps, punches, um, wood stamps, embossing folders that are all birthday, right? All organized by birthday. So if I go to birthday, I'm going to see all of those things. On this side, on the pink background, I have Stephanie Bernard um, birthday stamps. So the Stephanie stuff is not store, is stored with other things from Stephanie Bernard. So now I'm going to go, and it's going to tell me they're in the Stephanie Bernard flip and storage binder. So if I go to that binder, now I'm going to find the stamps or dies that match those things. So it doesn't matter that I might have some of my stamps stored in a die stamp supply organizer and some of them in the binder because the instructions in my um, catalog are going to drive me back to that item. I'm going to be able to find it quickly and easily. Okay, so how do you do it? So here's my catalog I chose to do in 12 by 12. Now, important things about catalog. You might want to do double representations of stuff, especially if you are someone who is on a design team and you need to remember what brands of products that you use. So while I have all the Stephanie Bernard stuff in a Stephanie Bernard section, I also have her things. So I've got a Stephanie section, but I've also got her things that are birthday in the birthday section and her things that are dogs in the dog section. Right? So if I'm using a Stephanie Bernard stamp, I know it, and I can use that in my design uh, team description of what products that I used. Sometimes you just want to keep things together by designer because you collect a designer, Tim Holtz or Anna Griffin, and when you're buying something new, a catalog becomes really helpful because you can think, oh, that looks familiar. Do I have that embossing folder or that stamp? You can go right to the Tim Holtz section and flip through and see, oh, yeah, I already have that. Oh, but I don't have this one, and the two go together. So it makes you a better uh, buyer, uh, more aware of what you have, and easier to check what you have. And this is really important if you're somebody who attends events like um, Close to My Heart or Stampin' Up, where you have an opportunity to buy more stamps, um, and you want to make sure that you're buying things that complement rather than duplicate what you already own. So the catalog serves multiple purposes. Um, it even <coughs> <clears throat> it's even super helpful if you're going to a crafting event because you can take your catalog and say, okay, when I get home, you take a sticky note and say, I'm going to finish this page by adding this Stephanie Bernard cupcake stamp and die. And then you don't have to haul all your stamps, all your inks, your embossing powders, um, your dies, your cutter, all that stuff with you to the event. You just take your catalog and you can still 
use all of your products by just putting a note in, leaving the right amount of space because you know how big it is, and then, um, and then finishing up when you get home so you don't have to haul everything. So it takes me to my next point about a catalog. A lot of people ask me, can I do my catalog in OneNote or Evernote, which are um, products for your phone. They're digital, so you can take a picture of all of your stamps and punches and categorize them within that program, OneNote or Evernote. And that works well. The only problem with a digital catalog is size and dimension. So if I actually stamp out this stamp, or if I print the, the copy of the stamp like I did here, I know the true dimension of that stamp. But if I'm looking at it on my phone, unless you put a ruler next to every product that you photograph, it's going to be very difficult to know how big that actual stamp punch die is. Now, there's one exception to this, there's always an exception, and that's embossing folders, because embossing folders come in pretty standard sizes, 4x6, 5x7, um, they're not this huge array of sizes like dies and stamps um, and punches are. So you could conceivably do that with your embossing folders, and, um, but I wouldn't recommend it for anything that you need to know the size of that product. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you actually catalog your supplies? You're going to make uh, your catalog pages first, and your catalog pages <coughs> are going to follow along with your four-section system. So you're going to have alphabets and numbers, and then a page for each of the themes that you own or that you use, and then, of course, holiday and seasons. There is obviously no rainbow because color is not part of a tool, right? You could turn something... You could make a red bird using a bird punch, but then it's a bird punch in bird. It's not rainbow. So there is no rainbow. So I guess it's only three sections, but they're the same. Alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments, and then the calendar year, holiday and seasons um, are that last, that third section. And remember, you want to cross-reference things. So if it's something that works, so in my, for my example, in the flowers section here, I have poinsettia. I have poinsettia dies. I have cut the dies twice and put the poinsettia dies in Christmas and put the poinsettia dies also in flowers. Just so if I'm looking at for flowers, I might be able to use that even though it's Christmassy, it still might work for me. So you'd want to do the same thing where you're, you know, replicating them throughout your um, four section system wherever that's appropriate. So you're going to follow your themes and sentiments list. You're going to create some, um, and I use, oh, if I can. I use 12 by 12 paper, and um, this is the back side of this page, right? So this is a 12 by 12 paper that I'm never going to use. I got a whole tablet or a whole um, paper pad of black and white prints. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking I had a 40 off coupon. I needed to spend it on something, and so that is what I bought. And now I'm just using the white side um, for my catalog pages. So. Um, you need 12 by 12 paper, or you can do it in 8.5 by 11. This one was done in 8.5 by 11. If you're going to travel with your catalog or take it to events, 8.5 by 11 is a little bit easier to handle, but you're limited. So if you have 12 inch long dies or 12 inch long embossing folders, you're not going to be able to represent those in their entirety in um, the smaller catalog. So you just need to choose 8.5 by 11 or 12 by 12. Then you're going to need, obviously, the paper to create those on. And you can see, this is an old one. This was made for me years ago. When I first started teaching, a, um, uh, somebody took the class, made it, and sent it to me as an example. She lined out each of the boxes, so it's kind of neat and tidy. Mine, as you saw, is kind of haphazard. Everything's just kind of on the page, um, with the exception of things like embossing folders, which I initially did. Um, kind of haphazard and random, and then that bothered me, of course, because so when I did the embossing folders, I gridded off my page into, um, what are those, three by three squares? One, two, three, four, yeah, probably. And, um, and then I used a crayon and did rubbings of them. So uh, running an embossing folder through your machine every time to get the example of it is going to be really time consuming. Um, so I just did, this is the positive and the negative of each of the embossing folders. 
And I just did a rubbing with a crayon inside that small square. And then again, I just labeled it with where I would find that um, embossing folder. So when I look at this, borders and backgrounds, which is what this section is called, I see all these different choices I have for embossing folders and where to go to get them. But it was really fast and easy um, to do it once I created the grid on my paper. So there's a lot of shortcuts. I do want to say that almost every subject that, I, that we're working with, punches, dies, stamps, embossing folders, even stencils, there is a blog post or a video about that specific thing on the website. And we'll try to make sure that we have links to all those on the Get Organized Challenge page. So if there's something that you are really kind of focused on or that you have a lot of and you want to be really specific about that particular thing, um, please know there's tons of reference points on the website that will help you with that and watching the step-by-step -step process, right? So the first, so you're going to make your catalog, first step, and then you are going to take whatever box bin drawer tote bag that you are working with and you're going to create those representations of each thing or multiple representations of each thing depending on the category. You need to have your things put away first because as you punch out each of these punches and incorporate them in your catalog, you will need to already know where they are. So if you're doing the small punches and you count them up, there's 32 small punches, one through 32, bag number one, however you're going to label it. When you put those representations in your catalog, you can say this is in bag number one or this is punch number one which however you're going to label that um, so that you can remember. So it's important that you know where those are going to go. So this is sort of counterintuitive because you think, oh, I'm going to catalog this and then I'm going to put it away. Well, you really want to do it in the reverse. How are you going to store it and where are you going to store it? Put it away first and then catalog what's in that container because you need to know where it is before you create your catalog. So hopefully um, that makes sense. I just had some other thing pop through my head that I thought that's an important factor. And now it's gone. Boom. Um, you can also use your uh, photocopier to do things like make a whole example of what's in that bag or, or box or whatever it is. So this is this bag. And I just put this face down on the copy machine. And in years past, I had put it in the bag the right way, or what would be considered the right way with the flap on the front. Well, if you put it in backwards, um, when you photocopy it, you're not going to get the flap, which I've, in the past, I've always had in my photocopies. I don't know if you can zoom in on that or not, Liam, but um, you can see I put a copy of this in the bottom of the tray. So when you have a full tray, and you got to work things back in that gives you that tells you where they fit in your tray so put a copy in the bottom of your tray for both punches and stamps and then especially with stamps it's like um, playing Tetris to get them all back in there once you've pulled a couple of them out so having that grid in the bottom lets you know how to lay those stamps in so they fit in there really nicely all right I haven't been following my thing so let's see where am I um, <clears throat> Okay, so you may want to come up with, I'm talking to you, Gloria, some sort of codes that these are wood stamps, these are punches, that type of thing. Think through how you're going to label things first before you get started because like me, I went through and did, well, I did it backwards, first of all. I, uh, the first thing I did was I made examples of all my punches and then I stuck them all down by category in my catalog and then I put them away and then I had to go back to the catalog and refine them and write down on the catalog where they were. So learn from my mistakes, store your items first. So choose your storage first. Um, for those of you who are looking for storage for stamps, dies, punches, all of our desk made stuff is on sale this week. I'm not going to, I'll talk more about it later, but if you can scroll down again, I think there's a wood mounted stamp storage down there at SS6L. So, depending on the space you have and um, where you like your things, how you like your things, getting the right tools is important before you start cataloging. So many of you already have them stored. The containers that you have might be perfect and they might work just totally fine and you're going to work through them. Now, here's one pr 
problem that happens regularly with organizing things that are bulky, punches, stamps, dies, um, is that we have in our heads that those things have to be kept together in, by category. So all of your birthday stamps together, all your beach stamps together, all your baby stamps together, right? You don't have to do that if you're cataloging. This is really hard for people to, the concept of it is super simple, but I don't have a good way to explain it. So, so there's some blog posts about it also. So what happens is I've collected three drawers of stamps. I've got my baby stamps, my beach stamps, and my birthday stamps, right? And my beach stamp drawer is full. So if I'm trying to keep everything together, now I've got to take some of the stamps out of birthday and move them down a drawer so that I can overflow the beach so that I stay baby, beach, beach, birthday, right? So I'm going to spend all this time rearranging. So, and that is the problem with bulky things, that you're constantly rearranging to keep things together. But if you have them in order by number, if you've given them all a number and you've cataloged them, then it doesn't matter, right? You've got baby and beach and birthday because they're already put away that way. You've cataloged them that way. They're numbered 1 through 25 and 26 through 50 and 51 through 75. And now you get a new beach stamp. That stamp can become stamp number 76 and go in the drawer that's labeled 76 through 100 because you're going to take the impression of that stamp, put it in beach, write the number 76, and put it in the drawer. So you no longer have to rearrange everything or reposition things because you're using a catalog. So for most of us, Gloria got a lot of us, we are going to continue to buy things. We are going to continue to add to our collections. And the frustration of constantly trying to rearrange things, or you bought a storage tool for your stamps, and that storage tool no longer exists. So you can't get another thing that fits in the same dimension as your other things. What are you going to do? Rearrange all of them? No. You're going to get your new thing, give it a new number, and just start adding to that binder, shelf, whatever storage tool it is uh, without missing a beat and without spending a bunch of time reorganizing, right? So the catalog, cataloging for tools is super valuable. Um, if you, again, if you're on the Facebook page, ask questions from other people who've cataloged and they will tell you it was a lot of work, but they are using their tools so much more often and so much more easily because they know what they have and they know where to find it. So if you are starting to feel this, um, sense of overwhelm, oh my gosh, I have thousands of stamps, I'm never going to get them cataloged. You, you got to get that out of your head and say, all I have to catalog this week is what's on my Get Organized Challenge to do, right? It's going to be a process. The beautiful thing about it is you can just keep working through the process of cataloging as you come across, use, share, whatever your stamp dice punches. You can add them to the catalog in the moment that you're using them, right? So kind of do double duty. While you're using it, make the catalog example, give it a number, put it away, and you're good to go. All right. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm there. I think I've got it all. So, if you have questions that haven't been answered or you haven't had a chance to ask them, pop them up now and Karen will get them answered for you. And uh, so you're, and I will go through your challenge checklist for this week, which is pretty simple. You're going to catalog 20 things a day for the next seven days or 140 items over the week. So for some of you, if you were doing this, if you were cataloging this, right, getting those numbers on there, making the photocopies or punching them out and putting them away, that's going to be really fast. That's 32 items. You could do all this in probably 30 minutes if you have your, you know, scrap paper and your catalog ready to go, right? So don't get overwhelmed with the amount of stuff you have to do. Just think, I only have to do 20 things today, or I'm going to do 60 things tomorrow and then because I don't have time on Wednesday and Thursday. So it's pretty manageable. This is also another thing where if you have kids or friends or family that are around, that they can also help you to um, document these things and get them into your catalog. So don't be afraid to in in incorporate some help from your friends and family, especially if you have kids who also work with your craft supplies. So this is a great way to train them how your supplies are stored and encourage them to find it, use it, and then put it back where they found it because it's easy to know. Okay, so your uh, next step is going to sort four inches of paper. So if you are still sorting paper, and some of us are, um, you want to sort four inches of paper. 
You want to sort one box or another year of photos if you're doing digital. Sort one more container of embellishments. I'm going to go back to embellishments. Remember, your embellishments need to go in your four-section system just like everything else. They're not special. They're part of the group. Be inclusive. Get them in there um, so that you'll see them and you'll use them. Um, post your progress on the Facebook group if you want to be entered in the progress post drawing every week to win a Totally Tiffany gift certificate. And when you complete your challenge, make sure that you reward yourself with whatever reward it is that you've chosen for this week. <clears throat> um, there are, as I said, tons of blog posts, videos, things that go just for punches, just for um, stencils, just for stamps, whatever it is. So if you are if you want to focus in specifically on one type of tool and you need a little bit more help or you want a little bit more understanding, please feel free to you know, go on the website, find those things. A lot of them are listed on the Get Organized Challenge page. When you scroll down the page, there's a little icon for each of the eight classes. If you click on the tool class, Karen has been trying to compile all those links and printables and all that stuff on that one page so they're really easy for you. Uh, to reference and see. I just did a bunch of stuff on stencils last month. Um, I don't know if Karen even knows that that's there or if she's had a chance to add it, but um, Karen, if you haven't, uh, you, if you would add that to your to-do list, um, but if you are struggling with stencils, if you just search organize stencils on our, um, from the little uh, search box above the blog post, you'll be able to find those as well. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to talk a little bit about products that we sell. If you have printed your handout or if you are following along online, at the back of the handout for this class, there are multiple three pages of different types of products that we make. So I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm just going to talk in general a little bit about each of them. But if you just downloaded the handout and you're looking at it on your computer, all of those things are clickable. So if there's something you want more information about or what I'm saying doesn't really make a lot of sense, you can click on any one of those and find out how much it costs and other uses for it. One thing you might not know on our website is that underneath the main picture, um, there are, there's a tab that has description and that's what's usually open, that's what you usually see. Well, between the main picture and the text, there are more little tabs. So there's one that's called More Photos, uh, one that's called Videos, and I think there might be another one that's even called More Information that um, gives maybe dimensions or whatever, but each of our products can be used for multiple things. So we can't show all of those things on the main screen for each product, but if you click on that more products tab, you'll see all the different ways that that product can be used. So I'm going to start with the first thing on the page, which is um, the die stamp and supply organizer. And that is shown with embossing folders in that first picture. I didn't even use those in my, I was talking today. Um, clean up my workspace here. So this is the die stamp and supply organizer and it's very simply organized alphabets, themes, holidays, right? So this same tool, this one's loaded with, like I said, stamps, but it's also going to fit embossing folders. It's also going to fit dies in our die stamp and supply pockets. So if you want something that's open on your desktop and really easy to just flip through and find stamps or embossing folders or dies, this is a great tool for that, right? So if you have, um, this is going to hold, I'm going to say probably, it's probably on the website, which is another thing about the descriptions. They give a lot more information. This is probably going to 20, uh, 20, 40, 60. This is probably going to hold 120 stamps. Um, unmounted stamps, equal number or more dies, and embossing folders. The sections of it are movable. So there are the, the little slide-in sections. So depending on whether you want them divided or you don't want them divided, you can move the dividers around any way that you want to hold those. But this is the die stamp and supply organizer. The next thing is the um, flip and storage page. And this is a 12 by 12 page that has pockets in it that flip. I don't have a 12 by 12 version here, but this is the smaller version. This is the flip and storage binder, right? So this has got stamps and dies in it, um, but the same concept. This flip and page is also available in a 12 by 12 page 
that fits in your scrap rack or in any of our 12 by 12 craft binders. Um, next up are fab files, and fab files come in nine different sizes. Uh, specifically for tools, we're talking about um, our magnetic die and stamp sheets, which of course I don't have one right handy. Do I? Let me see. What do we have up here? So this is the 5 by 7 fab file. And inside here I do have uh, the 5 by 7 pocket. So here are the dies and here are the stamps that go together. Uh, Stephanie Bernard dogs. This is Stephanie Bernard, the Stephanie Bernard box of goodies. Um, so the 5 by 7 fab file works with the 5 by 7 pockets and the 5 by 7 magnetic sheets. So if you're trying to store your stamps and your dies together, the 5 by 7 fab file pockets and magnetic sheets are a great way to keep everything together and they fit the vast majority of stamp and die sets in that 5 by 7 dimension. They're, almost everything fits in there. Probably 90% of what's in the market for dies and stamps are going to fit in those pockets and on those magnetic sheets. Our magnetic sheets are a little bit unique. They're flexible, which makes it easy to, full, to kind of bend the magnetic sheet and pop the die off of it, right? So, and also the white side, the white side of ours is the magnetic side, so it's a little bit prettier. But it's also high gloss, which means once you put your dies on your dies on the magnet, it's easy to slide them around and pack the most dies into that space as you can. But the flexibility of it allows you to kind of pop the dies off. It also makes them about half as thin, half as heavy as the ones that are mounted on a board or on a heavy piece of chipboard. So. Um, those are all the considerations when we, we took into when coming up with that product is how do we make it lighter weight, how do we make it easier to get the dies off, how do we make it prettier, um, and all those things are how we got to the white high gloss and the flexibility and the lighter weight of not adding that heavy chipboard back. The other thing is, once you add that heavy chipboard back, you've taken up the space in the pocket so it's harder to put the stamps in, so easier to put your stamps and dies together too, so multiple reasons. Die storage, the die file, is this guy right here. Some of my panels are missing because they went with me to HSN, but I will show you. Ta-da! So the die file is going to store your dies on these little magnetic strips. And you get 10 of the panels. You get 60 of the magnetic strips. Oop, put on your glasses. It's easier to put it away. You can put the magnetic strips on both the back. What did I do here? I put it in sideways. Come on. You can put the die files. Maybe I should just put my glasses on. There we go. Um, you can put the magnetic strips on both the back and the front to kind of double up the storage on those as well. We are very limited on them in stock here on our website. However, they will be available on HSN, which always has the best price, and $5 shipping usually um, in the April, not March the April 24-hour um, craft day. The March 24-hour craft day is March 3rd. Someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Tuesday, March 3rd is the 24-hour craft day. If you are not an HSN shopper, um, I would recommend that you at least tune in for part of that day and kind of see what they have going on. One of the really great things about HSN is that you get a demonstration of the product, right? So when you go to a craft show or a really good store, they're demonstrating product, you see how you use it, you get all the tips and tricks, and that is really the value of watching HSN on craft day. Not only do you learn about new things, not only do they have great deals and usually $5 shipping, but you actually get a demonstration of that product. So with all that said, that's my pitch for HSN. The, um, one thing you also need to know about HSN is that on craft day, you do not have to wait for me to come online to do a presentation in order to get the best deal. The prices on craft day usually, not always, but usually go live the day before craft day. You're going to see the, what the craft day's price is. Now on the 24 hour craft day, you're going to get that $5 shipping. So you want to put every, everything that you buy in craft is all going to be combined. So even if you make multiple purchases, they're, um, they're all going to be, or different things, right? So if you buy this, from Tolly Tiffany and something from Crafters Companion, when you put it in your cart, you're only going to pay $5 for everything that's in your cart to ship. So that's key also. But almost always we sell out of everything that's on HSN. So if there's something that you really want, 
don't wait until the presentation to buy it. Uh, last, we were on with the die file last month, and they sold out before I even got on air last month. So if there's something that you want, get it in your cart and get it purchased. Don't wait for the presentation. You can always watch the presentation and learn more, but if you know you want it, don't wait. Okay, sorry, little side note there. Um, so again, the die demo supply organizer can be used for dies as well as a fab file. And then in terms of punches, you saw the one inch punch and supply pack that I use for punches. This is the same product used for stamps. So I just have the stamps in a front ways. So great for wood stamps, also great for smaller punches. These bags come in one inch, which is what this is, one and a half inch and two inch. So ideal for even bigger punches, bigger tool types of things. And then the nice thing about these is they go vertically on your shelf, right? So um, if, and you can see them. So you can pull this out and look at what you've got versus kind of pawing through a big bin or opening drawer after drawer of punches to see what you've got. So for punches and stamps, the um, punch packs work great. Also, the stadium arrangers are ideal. The six-level stadium arranger, which is the one that um, is below me with all the wood stamps in it, works great also for small punches, but it's a really great way to really visualize to see all of those stamps or punches that you're going to use on a regular basis. So the stadium arranger comes in two sizes, the six-level, which is one-inch sections, and the four-level, which is one-and-a-half-inch sections, so bigger um, tools, bigger punches are going to fit on the four inch one. And again, there are photos with tons of different types of products on the website. So if you're thinking of a specific product that you have, what will it fit in? You're probably going to be able to find a picture of it on the website. And sometimes if you just search that product, pictures of it stored will, sh will pop up as well. Um, we try to tag all our pictures and name all our pictures to include the products that are in them so that you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. Um, I talked already about the flip and storage page. Um, the different buddy bags. So the buddy bag in this picture is the Denise buddy bag. And um, Denise has three different sections inside her. So you can put your dies or your stamps in the medium-sized pockets, and then you create this small file that's in that buddy bag and that makes it portable also easy to close up and put on a shelf somewhere and then pull down when you need it so depending on the type of crafter you are if you haven't sort of looked at those um, types of crafters Kathy Craft Room, Sophia Crop a lot, Karen Craft About, Mary Mobile Maker who you are is going to help you choose which type of product to, is going to work best for you which is really really important where do you craft, how do you craft, who do you craft with these are all great questions for you to answer about yourself before you start choosing storage products for your home or crop tote. Um, stencils can be stored, of course, in your scrap rack, super easy, or in your scrap rack pages. Again, I just did a couple of blog posts about stencils. Depending on the size, they're going to fit in the 6x6, 5x7, 8.5x11, 12x12 fab files as well. Um, I have a bunch of stencils right now. This is, again, the die stamp and supply organizer. So same tool as this. Same tool, just different stuff stored in there. So just in our different 6x6 six six pockets, 8x8 eight, eight eight pockets, 12x12 12 12 pockets, and just all the different sizes of stencils. And you can see just labeled and organized that way. So depending on the space you have, and how much you use things. If you are somebody who is constantly using stencils, you do a lot of mixed media, you do a lot of card work, we're using tons of stencils, you want them out, you want them accessible, you want to be able to flip through and choose the one that you want. If you use them less often, putting them in a binder where you're not seeing them might be, or into a fab file where you're not seeing them all the time might work great for you. But know who you are, what you use, and how you use it, and then you'll be able to choose the right tools that are going to work for your supply collection and the way that you actually craft. Um, all of the 15 inch desk made products, the six by the six level stadium arranger, the die stamp supply organizer, the four level stadium arranger, those all fit in our craft cart. So if you have our little crafty cart that has the three baskets in it that you can pull out and you want to put um, 
a better organizer in them for whatever you're using. Now obviously this isn't going to fit in the craft cart unless you put it on the top shelf because it's so tall, but this one you could definitely put in the middle or bottom of the craft cart. So if you want to keep all your stamps and all your dies in that cart, this is a great way to do that as well. Um, craft cart is a perfect, perfect solution for that. Glasses. Um, portable uh, tools. So of course, our Ditto tool bag is, you know, one of our best sellers and has been for years. If you're looking for a great tool bag to move your basic tools around, the Ditto tool bag and the lowest tote combination is an excellent combination for basic tools. So now we're talking more about scissors and um, rulers and paint brushes and, you know, your X-Acto knife and that type of thing. Those are going to be great if you want them to be portable in the Ditto bag. If you want them on your desktop and you want to have access to all of those kind of basic hand tools, again, the die stamp and supply organizer where you can segment off each of those sections and put your scissors and your punch handles and paint brushes and all that type of thing, that's going to be a great option. Um, and there are pictures of each of these things, again, on the handout, but also when you go to the website, you'll see them. If you're looking for a smaller desktop kind of basic tool organizer, um, the tool tower, which is this little guy right here, is a great way to store basic tools as well and have them on your desktop and at your fingertips. Um, really easy, super easy to access. And again, all of those things are going to fit into your cart if that's what is that if that's what you want to do with them. The carts also have the crafty apron around them, so you get lots of extra pockets with the craft apron as well, so that you can put different types of tools and products in that apron pockets and have those again you can just wheel them next to you super easy to use paper cart as well this is going to fit on the top of the paper cart you've got your paper storage boxes on the bottom you might have vinyl roll organizers on the top um, but you can put either any of the site the 15 inch sizes of these on the top of the paper cart and that's going to really give you that much more flexibility with that cart and how you're going to use it and fill it that cart also now when we last time we did the class it did not have there was no apron for that but um, so many people asked us for the apron after having the apron on the crafty cart that there's also an apron now for the paper cart so when you click onto the paper cart um, and that might be an old link also you know Karen tries very hard to keep up with things like changing links or whatever but if you don't if those don't link to the new paper cart just um, search it on the website and it'll pop up for you Okay, so I think that covers sort of all the basic tools and products that we make that are going to work well for organizing stamps, punches, dies, all that kind of thing. Oh, we've been passed a note. Woo Usually that means a question. Let's see. Oh, um, anyone have an idea how to store one inch foil rolls that are about four inches long? Um, ba ba ba. Do I have any short foils in here? I do not. However, here is, I think I have some skinny foils though. Metallic foil, there they are, right labeled, right there, foil. So this is a smaller roll of foil. This is our um, vinyl roll organizer and it's designed for that 12 inch long, you know, the, um, the sleeve that you wrap around to protect it. I've also got the label tucked in there with it so that I can know what color it is and who made it and how to use it. But if you're using these, if you're using the sleeves and you have a shorter roll, just cut your sleeve, right? So you'll be able to still keep that foil rolled up on that without so they you know they just come undone and they get a mess and they get folded so if you just cut it to the the sleeve to the height that you need it tuck your roll of foil in there and then you'll be able to stand it up in whatever tool you're organizing in if you're using our vinyl roll organizers you're just going to be able to stand that up in there as well so just cut your sleeve down and you'll have a nice protective easy to use easy to re reuse wrap for that foil or vinyl or whatever it is all right, I think that concludes our class for today. Again, if you have questions, join our Facebook group, the Get Organized Challenge group. Uh, people are online 24-7 pretty much there, and there's a lot of gals who are crafters who've taken 
the Get Organized Challenge and can answer tons of questions. If you don't get your question answered there or you need something really specific, don't hesitate to email us at customerservice at totally-tiffany.com and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can with an answer to your question. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you have a great and very productive week and don't forget to put up your progress post. I'll see you next Tuesday.